sponsor for this invitation and i would like to um i would like to thank him for this gathering and uh for allowing us to be uh, in such event thank you dr fikri thank you very much uh, dr uh, dr mona uh, it's a delightful uh, to work with you in this you have put a lot of effort and we have a wonderful group of uh, speakers and i'm looking forward to their contributions which uh, will start soon thank you very much all of you shall we have the video first from uh, or should we start right away Tourism in UNESCO World Heritage Sites is often considered predatory with destructive effects on the environment and which destabilizes local communities whose profits are seized by companies based in other countries. Yet tourism is a platform and vehicle to present heritage to a wide audience, to support preservation while contributing to economic and social sustainability. It is a mechanism that allows preservation and protection of heritage itself. But this requires awareness from all stakeholders and the involvement of local communities and the use of appropriate management tools, especially nowadays when tourism and heritage sites are exposed to critical changes from both within and from without. Our World Heritage believes that defining the key principles of mutually beneficial interrelationship between heritage and tourism is crucial. These challenges include the ramifications of COVID-19 and the subsequent global economic and social crises. We maintain that it is imperative to pave the way for a conceptual and practical revision in the interrelationship between heritage, tourism and development, thus a need to dismantle previous outdated concepts. We are an interdisciplinary team of universities and researchers, NGOs, businesses and institutions. We strive to rebuild new collaborative paradigms between heritage and tourism. We wish to offer tools, methods and approaches capable of responding to the challenges of our time in an effort to develop meaningful and mutually supportive synergies which will ensure continuity, resilience and sustainability of heritage and tourism alike. You are invited to take part in our exchanges and discussions in the course of 2021. Our World Heritage. I would like to uh, welcome everyone and especially welcome uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Minja Yang and uh, Professor Maria Gravri Barbas. Uh, who uh, are the mavericks behind many of these activities. And I'm delighted to have been working with them on this and that I have been included in this incredible initiative, uh, which I'm sure will have a tremendous impact in the future in the way we deal with our world heritage. Uh, Professor Minja. I think Maria should go first. Hello. Maria. Sure, no so yes, of course, a few words just that you uh, say hello to everybody. And you. Thank you for participating with, with this incredible event to the Tourism Month of Our World Heritage Initiative. Many of you had the opportunity to participate to the other events that were organized all through this month. We are now arriving to the last, the last week of the Tourism Month of Our World Heritage Initiative, and we kept uh, a lot of things for this last week. So we are really happy to participate today to this event in Luxor. Um, I would be more happy, of course, to be with you in Luxor, but of course, uh, the, uh, this period is quite difficult for all of us. And um, congratulations also for the event that you plan tomorrow, uh, Monday, or more oriented on uh, art issues related to tourism. And just uh, to inform you very briefly that this week we will also have another event tomorrow on smart tourism and uh, tourism data observation. The day after, we will have an, uh, an event uh, um, on West Africa with very, very important issues um, in uh, um, different countries and mainly in Senegal. Then we will have an event uh, in Latin America, then the day after in China. 
And then we will have an event in Turkey and our final event that will take place on February 26th. So this uh, week will be very, very sporty and we really are hoping to have you with, uh, with us. We also hope that uh, you will have the time to uh, stay connected because just after we finish uh, Tourism Month, we start the next theme of our World Heritage Initiative with uh, uh, gender. So gender issues, which are of course extremely important for uh, tourism and heritage. Uh, so uh, please uh, keep also connected with uh, the uh, inaugural events of the gender theme uh, with an incredible webinar. Um, for the tourism theme, uh, we would like to invite you also to take into consideration the recommendations we did. This is extremely important because the idea is not only to have events, the idea is also to work on those events during uh, all through uh, 2021 and 2022, uh, the anniversary year of the um, uh, World Heritage Convention. So please uh, get into the Our World Heritage page, the page of tourism. You will find the recommendations. We prepared recommendations in 21 different themes. Many of those recommendations, three themes, are suggested by uh, Dr. Fekri Hassan. So please get uh, into the page and react. The idea is not, of course, only to uh, suggest our recommendations, but uh, to give the floor to exchange with you. So thank you uh, very, very much for all your efforts. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maria. Uh, Minja, would you yes, like to yes, say Just very briefly, among the 210 recommendations which have been gathered from, uh, gathered from across the globe, as Maria said, in 21 themes, um, there is one recommendation in particular, which I think is extremely relevant to the session that you are organizing today and tomorrow, uh, Fekri. And one is that everybody says, okay, we need to have a multi-stakeholder, multi-sectorial uh, plan, an integrated plan, which includes tourism as part of the whole urban territorial planning, uh, you know, um, economic, social, cultural, and to take an inclusive approach, fine. I think nobody will uh, disagree with that. But the question is how? Because in many, many of the countries that we are working in, the government is quite absent. You know, I mean, even if the government exists, they are not present in the field. And so while we talk about the bottom up approach, community involvement, I mean, many of the things that's going on in, in Egypt, I mean, it's very, you know, the elites, the educated groups work together with the local community and there are many incredible things happening in countries like India, Turkey, different countries in Africa. But how do you make that into policy? How do you scale up some of the excellent local initiatives into making it a local authority policy? And this is really what I think that uh, the debate today is, uh, and tomorrow is really going to be addressing in terms of innovative itineraries for tourism and how can that be connected to the SDGs. So with that, I'm looking forward to listening to all of you. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Minja. I mean, it's uh, really incredible that we have that many uh, high powered uh, representatives of uh, who is who in the field of uh, heritage, world heritage, uh, earth architecture and sustainable architecture. And we will have the introductions of each one as they uh, come along to speak. But uh, at, the, at the start, I just would like to really thank uh, heartily everyone that uh, took the time to participate with us today. And uh, I would move directly to our uh, presentations uh, with a few remarks on the topic that we, that's at hand, uh, followed by a short uh, video and then we will begin uh, to uh, have the speakers uh, in uh, three sessions. The first session is uh, a general one uh, on the uh, Hassan Fati and the preparations uh, for uh, a center and a development of that uh, with an international, uh, distinguished international cast to be followed by um, a discussion in the, in the second session, which uh, is going to be uh, moderated by Dr. Mona Radi about Egyptian perspectives on this uh, from uh, community architecture as well as tourism. And then we will move at the end to uh, the final uh, general discussion. 
and for this reason, since we have a very short uh, time, uh, I wish we had three days to do this, and I'm sure we can, uh, taking a tour in the village as well. I am now in the house, uh, of one of the houses of Hassan Fathi. Uh, really a wonderful ambiance to be in and to communicate with you from this place. So I will share the screen so that you... Um, <clears throat> Uh, Dr. Fikri, excuse yes. me. Yeah, just yes. I would like just to comment. Yes. Yeah, Manel Batran. Uh, I'm a professor of urban planning, yes. a housing um, and building national research center uh, in Cairo. So if we are going to talk about uh, how to integrate or to make the initiative approach to be integrated in the policy for the government, I think uh, for the time being, it will be a, a, a are quite difficult, but we have well, to we'll go come to that in the general discussion, but we are now going yeah. to be doing with the presentation. Okay, you. fine. Thank you very much for attending the session. Thank you. Um, so um, we will begin with this uh, interesting uh, uh, poster that was made by Google celebrating uh, Hassan Fathi. Uh, his icon, of course, is uh, New Gurna. And uh, he was definitely ahead of his time, uh, born in the turn of the 20th century. And he made his mark uh, ahead of all others in his field, uh, bringing architecture to our minds as a way of life, uh, bringing buildings, people, and nature in a single integrated manner. Uh, he, uh, above all, I think he was a visionary. Uh, he, he, he saw the threat of bad, destructive, and dehumanizing side of modernity, and uh, began to examine how traditional architecture could be incorporated in a humane way of uh, living. Uh, he was already uh, working on this in the 1940s, and he began to be recognized with when the movement, the ecological movement, began in the 70s, and in the 80s, he was uh, given the uh, right livelihood uh, award. Uh, he, he was being discovered in Europe. Uh, the second, uh, uh, the second uh, award he had was from the Aga Khan. Uh, he got the chairman's award for his lifetime achievements because he was advisor to the Aga Khan. And in uh, 1984, he got the Golden Medal International Union of Architects Award. Um, his work uh, has inspired many prominent uh, architects, uh, such as the uh, work on vernacular architecture, architecture without architects, uh, the book by, by uh, Rodovesky in 1964. He influenced the Ian McHarg's design with nature, 1969, and definitely he had an influence on slum architecture, as we can see from this post. What I think is remarkable is that he, his influence is spread all over the world. Uh, and uh, when I was visiting Mali, I was uh, really delighted to see that he was uh, remembered and his uh, philosophy was being applied uh, in a school dedicated actually to earth architecture. Now, Hassan Fathi's legacy is, most people think of him in terms of his domes and vaults, etc., or uh, the way he uh, has used the natural ventilation. But I think he, we have to recognize Hassan Fathi now in a new light, uh, in the light of the new agenda. He, he should be rediscovered again, and he is being rediscovered again, and we are contributing to this today in the domain of uh, sustainable uh, development. And I think that's going to be his lasting legacy in the 21st century. He uh, said, there is more than enough room for all the villages of Egypt to multiply their production many times. He realized that soon uh, farming will not be a sufficient means for uh, the livelihood. And therefore he decided to uh, uh, create a uh, school for crafts and his ideas on development, on finding jobs, on fighting poverty, in uh, providing adequate housing, all of them coincide 
with the sustainable development goals that, of course, we are now all familiar with, uh, particularly in the field of adequate housing, healthcare, green, passive energy, and it's all in his book, Architecture for the People, Architecture for the Poor. Uh, this was also manifest uh, in the, the way he uh, constructed uh, public, uh, public facilities, such as uh, the School of Crafts that we mentioned, a health clinic, uh, water purified water pool for children so they don't catch bilharzia, as well as a theater. And I think it was remarkable. This was the first uh, theater in an Egyptian village, and he intended it. Uh, to unify people uh, during the performances, but also to provide recreation so that they would have the same privileges as rich people. And more importantly, I think it's way ahead of his time, he thought that the theater and the performances will also preserve the intangible heritage that he saw was disappearing. Um, a true visionary. Now his vision is being tarnished by the problems that have happened uh, with all the recognition that he's gained uh, worldwide there was very little attention to his icon, New Gurna, and it's now in, in bad shape, and only a few houses are left, and the public buildings, the mosque, the theater that you will see in the, in the little video have been, um, have, have deteriorated, and luckily UNESCO now is intervening uh, for the public buildings, and we will will see a presentation, short presentation of the current efforts by UNESCO for this reason. Uh, he also uh, created the idea of an institute for appropriate technology, as he called it. And uh, this is a, uh, a reminder for us that when we revived the idea of a, a center for sustainable architecture, that we have his original memo, in fact, uh, dating to 1979 for this. And uh, I'm delighted that uh, uh, Professor Francesco Bandarin is with us because his idea in the 2010, when UNESCO began to be involved, was to establish uh, a center for sustainable architecture in the village. And here we see uh, uh, Francesco uh, visiting the village and with uh, Governor Samir Farag during that initiative 2010, uh, which is now uh in thank you thank you yes thank you very much yeah. the uh hassan fati has envisioned uh a whole new way of looking at architecture and i think this uh approach is actually a way by which we learn how to be human through his architecture now we'll go to a, a short uh uh video uh, nine minutes that I stitch it from all the different documentaries that, uh, sorry, I think I. Oops, I have to go back. Dr. Fikri, there is no sound. I can hear it, but I don't know why you don't have a sound. I think you need to share the sound from, from the You need same. to share the sound? Or you... Yes, yeah, from Sorry, the same bottom that. of sharing the screen. I do hear yeah. it. I hear, I hear it. Yeah. yeah. I will stop it and then we can start again. Uh, where is the share the sound? We have just. Uh, yeah. I can hear the sound. There is no problem with the sound. You can hear the sound? It, yeah. Dina, can you hear the sound? No. No sound. Now it's no sound, but I was hearing the, the, the prayers. 
and I was hearing el, the sound. El was was from me. <laughs> Not from oh, me. okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> اه لا لا هو الاذان في كل حته دلوقتي فاحنا مسموعين من الـ من الباك جراوند بتاعنا بس مش مش الفيديو دكتور حسن دكتور حسن لو حضرتك حاطط لو حضرتك حاطط سماعات شيل السماعات عشان الصوت يطلع بتاع ال if you stop option اه I think we should all mute maybe Uh, because some people are hearing and some don't. The way to do it is to sh stop share screen and to reshare and then tick a checkbox, share sound. And then... Where is the, the share sound? That is only, you can only see it if you stop sharing. Okay. On the red oh. button, correct. And now go back to share screen, the green button. Yes. And then before you click the box in the in the left bottom of that window, you will see share sound. Which window? Uh, if you press share screen. Yeah, then which you get the screen? options of which screen to share. In that same window, there's two tick boxes that you need to tick. It says share sound. Don't see that. Sorry about this. It's it's it was in the previous window that. <laughs> the previous window. Yeah, the previous before you click on the window that you want to share. Yes. So you it see. It says advanced or basic or. In the left. Uh, left. Yeah. I see it now. Okay, I see it now. Exactly, and then you choose the window that you want to share, and then okay. everything will be perfect. Perfect. You hear it now, I hope. Very good. Excellent, thank you. حسن فتحي اسم لكل معماري في العالم لو قلت له مصر يعني حسن فتحي حسن فتحي لما حد يروح رحلة معمارية أو رحلة علمية لازم ينزل يشوف الجورنة في الأقصر في عام 1969 نشرت وزارة الثقافة المصرية في طبعة محدودة كتاباً لحسن فتحي كتبه باللغة الإنجليزية تحت اسم القرنة قصة قريتين وفي عام 1973 نشرت جامعة شيكاغو الكتاب تحت اسم العمارة للفقراء وترجم الكتاب إلى 22 لغة من اللغات الحية هذا الكتاب منح حسن فتحي شهرة عالمية كأحد رواد العمارة البيئية البارزين As it's been published in America, it's sold tens of thousands of copies. It's used in, in the teaching faculties of the schools of architecture and all the major universities. In California, my university, Penn, is used as a tea in, in Chicago. It was published by the University of Chicago. And in Europe, because he addressed issues that are greater than building for Egypt. They're universal issues of, of building in a manner that's appropriate to the local environment. Hassan Fathi is one of the, the great landmarks of Egypt. I mean, he's a, a hero in the world. He's a hero in China. He's a hero in Africa. He's a hero in India and in Pakistan. I mean, he is more appreciated outside than he is inside, and that's a pity. The conclusion is that the 
فلما جينا نبني الجورنا جبنا من المبنيين اللي كان بيبنوا في في الكنوز وعملوا لنا الخبوات دي الجورنا ما كانش قريه عاديه لان دي كانت القرنة القديمه وقع فوق المنطقه الاثريه تحتيها مقابر الاشراف فوزاره الاسكان وزاره الثقافه حبت تزيل السكان من المنطقه الاثريه فحب يبنوا لهم قريه انما كانت قريه كان القريه كانت تكلف ملايين لما عرفوا ان في بنعمل باسهم مخببه وبنستعمل الطفله الطوب الني والحاجه دي قالوا لي تعالى اعمل لنا المشروع ده فكان فرصه جميله جدا ان احنا نقوم بعمل المشروع شملت هذه القريه الاتي المسرح اللي موجودين فيه حاليا بالاضافه لمدرسه نموذجيه بالاضافه لسوق نموذجي و70 منزل القرية هو بناها من الطين اكتشف أساليب البناء اللي كانت موجودة في النوبة وفي أسوان وقدر يحيي الخبرات الموجودة عند المعلمين الكبار اللي هم كانوا بيستطيعوا أنهم يبنوا قبة كاملة من الطين ودي مسألة فنية جدا ولها أساتذتها يعني في المنطقة كان يقول يعني اللي يروح في مكان عاوز يبني بيت يبص على الطبيعة في نفس المكان ما يجيبش حاجة من برا يبص مكان في حجر يبني بالحجر الطينة بتعمل بالطينة عشان يبقى المكان ملائم للطبيعة اللي هي فيها الحقيقة المهندس الفنان حسن فتحي راعى في إنشاء القرية أنها تكون متكاملة بل أضاف إليها أن بالإضافة لوجود مسجد ووجود السوق ووجود المسرح تواجد مركز خاص بتعليم الفرد حرفة البناء بالإضافة للحرف اللي هي خاصة بصناعة وصناعة المشغولات اليدوية اللي هي تشتهر بها مدينة الأقصر ليس هناك حل لحل مشكل الإسكان للأعداد الفقيرة اللي هم 800 مليون معظم دولة اللي في العالم يتل إلا إذا كان يبنوا بإيديهم بالطريقة التعاونية لأن الفكرة في البناء التعاوني أن رجل لا يمكنه أن يبني منزلا واحدا بمفرده إنما عشر رجالة يبنوا عشر بيوت بالراحة جت مرحلة بعد كده الحظ برضو يعني ساعدنا فيها إنه جت فرصة عظيمة وهو وهي ترميم مسرح الجورنا أدركنا ساعتها إن إحنا في معمل بيعلم المهندسين قبل ما يعلم البنايين قبل ما يعلم أو قبل ما يبني الوضع طبعا للاسف سيء بس يعني احسن سنه من سنه لما انا اتخرجت يعني م. انا مثلا اتخرجت سنه 86 ما خدناش ولا كلمه في الجامعه عن حسن فتحي نعم شغل حسن فتحي وكتاباته ظهرت امامي كما ظهرت لجيل بكامله كاحد الاجابات على هذه التساؤلات ازاي ازاي تكون العماره والعمران بصفه عامه والتخطيط وسيله لربط التنميه بالمجتمع بالناس لربط الناس بالبنى لتطويرهم لاحداث حاجه لها 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 معنى ولها حقيقه. حسن فتحي اقترح ان القرنة نعم. في كتابه عماره الفقراء مم. اقترح ان قريه القرنة تكون نموذج لاعاده بناء الريف المصري اللي هو 4000 قريه. اليونسكو ابتدت تهتم بناء على طبعا مجهودات عديد من المحب حسن فتحي. نعم. فرفعوا صوتهم ووصلوا اليونسكو وابتدت تهتم من قبل الثوره من قبل 2011. احنا عايزين نرجع نحيي حكايه المرسم دي بان احنا نخلي الطلاب يجوا يخلي السكان يتلاقوا مع الفنون اللي هتتعمل في هذا في هذه الاماكن بحيث ان هم يتعلموا مهنه لو ما عندهمش او يطوروا نفسهم لو كانوا عندهم مهنه أو يعملوا حاجة في وقت الفراغ يطلعوا منها مكسب بحيث إن إحنا نخلي ده كمان معرض للمنتجات اللي هم هي هي يتعلموها هناك طبعاً إحنا بنرحب بأي حد بيمد إيده ويرمم 
بس المشكله بس مش ان احنا نرمم الحاجه ونمشي المشكله كمان انه هذه الاشياء الاستدامه انها تبقى صالحه واستدامه الاستخدام بتبقى درجه الحراره في الصيف لطيفه كويسه يعني بالنسبه لجو جونا الحار في الشتاء بيبقى الجو برضه دافي وده منظومه ممتازه يعني كويسه حبيت البيت والراجل اللي بنى يعني بسطاء يعمل مناور لل ما فيش كان كهرباء ما فيش ثلاجات ما فيش اي حاجه عامل مناور عشان تجيب الهواء اللي عايز اقوله ان انا عايز اقعد هنا في بيتنا مش عايز اقعد هنا في اي مكان وان كانت في مشاريع يا ريت تكون في مشاريع لينا عشان نشتغل عشان في ناس ثانيه غيرنا تلقى تشتغل في ناس كثيره شباب كثيره راجله من غير شغل عاطله Sorry about that. Okay, we'll stop at this and uh, continue. Uh, I would like to invite at this point uh, architect uh, Imad Farid from Environmental Quality uh, International to uh, give us a few words about the current uh, UNESCO uh, restoration efforts. Architect Imad, are you with us? Imad? Well, if he is not uh, with us, then uh, I would like just to brief you on the fact that uh, restoration just began uh, this year in the public buildings. Uh, these uh, public buildings include the mosque uh, that you have seen in the in the video, as well as the uh, Khan, which is the school of crafts, and the uh, uh, and the theater. Uh, they are all in bad shape and uh, uh, restoration is underway. But I think the main problem is that uh, the, uh, the rest of the houses in the village uh, are not included in this phase. And we are hoping that they would be included in the next phase. And our effort is to try to support these efforts and complement it with a community effort and community participation uh, for the benefit of uh, the architects all over the world as for the uh, future of uh, uh, humanistic architecture. Now I will uh, leave the, uh, the stage here to uh, uh, Professor Dr. Mona Radi, who will moderate the uh, next session. Dr. Mona? Dr. Mona? Yes, Dr. Fikri, can you hear yes. me? Yes, I can hear you. We will begin, I think, with uh, uh, Professor Francesco Banderin. So you will make the introductions and uh, we'll let them in to, uh, to give their, their uh, short. Okay. Talk. Okay. Dear Excellency, distinguished guest speakers, it's my pleasure to be with you today in this big event and in this memorial moment for the legacy of Hassan Fathi. The most well known of all of Hassan Fathi project and the most important project, New Gorna, which still most significant for question it raised rather than the problem it tries to solve. These questions still await a thought and objective analysis. One of these questions highlight how this project was built between 1945, 1948, and reflects the vision of the United Nations in 2015 that adopted the 17 Sustainable Developing Goals as part of the agenda of 2030. That why this advocacy to launch an initiative at the hub and a center for sustainable architecture and development. I was shriveled, optimistic and enthusiastic when I proposed this initiative to some international organization and forums as I felt how much they were supportive and expressed great interest to join this event, 
with their vision, suggestion, strategies, and action to transfer Hassan Fathi New Gorna as living case of sustainable architecture and developing aims at establishing a hub center for the 17 sustainable development goals as poverty, education, appropriate housing in human settlement, climate changes, gender inequity, justice, peace, etc. I now give the floor to one of the encouraging figures that support our initiative and support our history regarding Hassan Fathi vision to the sustainable architecture, which is President Francesco Banderin, Professor of Urban Planning and Conservation at the University of Ivoa of Venezia, former director of UNESCO World Heritage Center and UNESCO Assistant Director General for Culture. Please, Mr. Francesco Banderin, Professor Francesco Banderin, can you take the floor, please? Thank you. Thank you very much. Look, thank you very much. I was um, actually not um, expecting to be called, but um, I'm very happy to contribute um, to this discussion. Well, you know, as I was re reminded by uh, Fakri Hassan, but Dr. Fakri Hassan, um, about 10 years ago, uh, when I was at the head of uh, UNESCO World Heritage Center and Assistant Director General for Culture, um, I had, uh, you know, really the obligation, I felt the obligation to do something to um, trying to preserve uh, New Gurna and Hassan Fati legacy. This was a, you know, an extremely uh, important project for every architect and heritage expert in the world. And you know, as we know very well, it was not very well kept. You know, we we had visited many times, uh, you know, during the different um, missions to to Luxor and Egypt, the place, and uh, of course we could see that the situation was going really very, very, very bad. So at that time, we had the uh, fortunately the opportunity to discuss with the uh, Egyptian government and you know, some about the use of some, uh, some funds that were available um, uh, in the UNESCO Egyptian uh, Fund Trust, fund, trust fund, fund in Trust. And we decided um, to mobilize some resources for, for uh, trying to contain at least or, or remedy to the deterioration of, uh, of the site. Uh, I think that was the beginning. Of course, you know, that was, if you remember 2010, and, and, and you also remember what happened, you know, later on in 2011, 12, and so on. So I think, you know, I cannot say that our initiative was successfully completed because of the circumstances. But I think we launched the idea. We put a, in place a very important idea that is that that uh, heritage is worth preserving. Now, uh, I, I know that this is not enough, you know, to, to the, the willingness to preserve heritage not, doesn't coincide. We lost the sound. I saw that. Yes. So, uh, yes, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you now. Yeah, yeah so we, we noticed that you know, many things have been deteriorating, so the situation is not uh, ideal over there. At the same time, uh, I think th this helped reviving the interest globally for, uh, uh, for the work of uh, Hassan Fati, although probably he doesn't need us for, to, be, to be well known, but certainly in the past uh, few years, a number of very interesting publications have come out. Uh, experts and uh, researchers have taken the opportunity to bring to the forefront the very valuable results of, of his work. And I think we, all, we now have at our disposal some very interesting uh, documentation on all these things. So I think and that you know, by, by just putting the seed at that time, 10 years ago, we have helped uh, the process that is taking place now. I hope so. Um, of course, uh, you know this will take some more time, and perhaps uh, in other inputs from at all levels, from government to local government, and of course the international community of experts that are motivated for this uh, preservation uh, effort. But certainly, the, the, the seed is there. So I really welcome what uh, uh, Dr. Fekir-san is doing uh, for you know to 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 bring back to the attention of. Uh, experts and heritage experts around the world the this project and of course he has done his own his own contribution by restoring 
uh, a little part of it. Now we hope that through this uh, collective uh, effort and interest, uh, at least the uh, some part of this uh, important project will be restored as an example of what has been perhaps you know, one of the most visionary and forward-looking uh, architectural experiments of the 20th century. So I think this is a, 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 something that belongs to humanity uh, for sure. So, so I, I think I thank you very much for the efforts that you're doing and I will, really I will follow that uh, in, in my other capacity now, as part of the Our World Heritage Organization and part of many other you know, interesting uh, heritage ventures. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Mona. You're muted. It... No, I'm not muted. Yeah, okay. Can you, can Thank you, you hear me? Thank you, Francesco, for uh, this uh, valuable contribution. I do very much thank you for having started uh, uh, this, uh, the ball going on this, and we are carrying on with you, and I'm delighted that you are with us on that and will continue to work to save this uh, incredible legacy of uh, a man, as you mentioned, that really belongs to humanity. Uh, with your permission, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Mona, I will share the screen so that I can give the, the video. I'll present the video yes. that by the president of the uh, uh, International Union. Yes, yes. Uh, architecture Thomas Vonier. He is uh, the, uh, he's a fellowship in AIA, American Institute of Architects. And he's now the working president uh, uh, for the International Union of Architects. That's his uh, words to us. Can you hear him? Can you start the video from the beginning? Okay, I will. Um, he's feeling very uh, regretted that he cannot uh, attend our uh, webinar, but he's having uh, family issues. That's why he's very sorry. And he sent his speech, a video recorded uh, speech. I want to lend my name and the name of the International Union of Architects to the efforts to restore and save uh, New Gorna and the wonderful legacy of Hassan Fati for the world. Uh, you know, there are many generations of architects who have learned from his work and from him personally, uh, but his appeal is wider than just to architects. His work has a message for all of humanity and a promise for the world we live in today. So I want to extend our support to Dr. Fekri Hassan and to all of our colleagues who are working hard preserve the legacy of Hassan Fatih, and especially the place we know so well near Luxor, New Gorna. So please uh, accept my warm good wishes and my congratulations for the seminar today, and my hopes that your efforts will be successful. I look forward to an opportunity to meet with you in person one day, and for now, send my greetings to you and my very best wishes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, for these nice words and encouraging ones. Uh, I now give the floor to Professor In Suk Shu. Uh, she's um, that uh, uh, sorry, In Suk Shu. She's a professor and in uh, sorry, she is the chairwoman of the Committee of Heritage Reservation uh, in uh, Vice President, the International Scientific Committee on the Analysis and Restoration of Structure of Architecture Heritage, OCOMOS, International Co-Director of the International Union of Architects Work Program of Heritage and Culture Identity. Um, Professor In Suk Shu, uh, she was here uh, last year and the year before, and she visited the Garna I think two times, and she's one of the uh, very uh, strong figures that is supporting 
our initiative and uh, we wish her uh, all of the luck for her efforts in the UNESCO for the conservation and reservation of the Hassan Faki. Uh, Professor Insukshu, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, okay, the floor me? is yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, can I share my uh, the presentation material or? Okay. I have okay. It, you know, if uh, I can oh, stop yeah. that and you can share it from your side, but I have it on the screen. Professor, have you sent your, uh, pres yes, yes, okay. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Hassan Fatih Center uh, should serve as a focal point for villagers and visitors to make them properly understand new Gurna as a sustainable living village. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. There are three major tasks. Can you can, can you please uh, can you please uh, mute your microphone only for Insukshu? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. The floor is yours, please, Professor. Okay. Thank you. There are three major tasks needed. Firstly, studying and protecting the core values of restoration and conservation of adobe structures. The center need to study how to cope with the extent external factors and how to protect the village internally. Secondly, sustainable monitoring and reflecting the changes in residents' life and requirements of awareness. Despite the social changes, the livelihood of those who live in the village and protect the village must be maintained. Thirdly, it is necessary to strengthen the self-sustainable that can co coexist naturally without being greatly affected by external factors. As a solution, the center can establish long-term plan and design guidelines and provide guided, guided tours. To do so, I would like to suggest the following. One, understand the new Guruna as a living heritage. New Guruna Historic Village is a residential area and the exploration places, not for tourist destination, so that a boundary or territory as a village should be clearly marked. Let the visitors explore only by visiting, not by sightseeing. It must be controlled the desires of villagers, villagers as well as local governments, <coughs> including the tourism agency. Two, establish a long-term plan and design guidelines. Guided tours of the village can be conducted, selected. The periphery of the village can be opened to the visitor and the village exploration internally should be selected. Encourage it to, the, to create a buffer zone and put the info center at the buffer zone, then keep the appropriate distance to the village. Do the video education at the info center ahead of visiting the village. The villagers pride should be maintained and their daily life should be respected. It is necessary to be guaranteed the privacy of village residents and its protection and good corporate governance in the village as well. Make it possible to eat only in stores and restaurants where villagers run and be made festivals and events possible only for villagers do, to do what they can. Let the next generation enable to eat and live in new Guruna so that they can participate in conservation and restoration of the village. Three, train villagers about the local materials and inherited techniques. Professional training should be provided so that the residents can participate in village restoration work. 
village people should be encouraged to produce materials for adobe construction and all the process should be visualized and recorded. Continuing education for the residents is necessary. Education for the current generation and education for the next generation must be different. For the next generation should be developed foreign language skills, information technologies, and guided tour skills. Integrating IT into new Guruna will be the next task. Both government and villagers should pay attention to the landscape destruction due to machinery introduced in a new era, such as TV set, IT equipment. A plan to maintain the existing landscape while meeting social needs must be developed. For example, underground work of electric cab cables. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor In Sukshu, for this very effective um, comments and presentation. Now, I give the floor for the representatives of the Okomos, Mandalina Eshenza, which is one, which is the chairwoman of the International Scientific Committee on Earth Architecture Heritage as a part of Okomos Internationals. That, that holds more than one, 130 Eastern Architecture Expert and Association members. And she was the president of the AISHA from 2018 to 2020. And I would give her the floor to present her vision. And I'm very thankful for the complete support of the Okumos and the AISHA for, uh, for um, supporting our initiative. Thank you very much. The floor is yours, please. Thank you, Dr. Monaradi, and thank you, Professor Fakri Hassan, for inviting me uh, to this meeting and giving me the chance to represent ISKIA uh, here. Uh, I also take the chance to greet some friends that I see are present today. Um, according to the bylaws, uh, which is our statutes, ISKIA uh, researches and promotes the understanding, the protection, the conservation, and the man and management of earth and architectural heritage defined by the committee as the architectural, archeological and cultural landscape heritage constructed of unfired clay or soil based material. Uh, the committee is engaged in the activities as you see them listed here, which is uh, research on better practices and methods for the protection and the conservation of earth and architectural, archeological and cultural landscape heritage. We sustain promotion of the same heritage. We encourage all activities uh, aiming to the knowledge and the understanding of earth and architectural heritage and all the traditional practices for building, maintaining and conserving it. We foster the gathering and the sharing of diverse professional experiences and knowledge, um, as well as we foster awareness raising, appreciation and interpretation of everything what rotates around earth and architecture, architectural heritage. Um, we address, of course, the needs of new associate members and emerging professionals. Uh, we actually uh, included in the latest years many of young professionals that are passionate uh, towards earth and architecture and especially understand the, um, the, the, the complementarity of the issues that earth and architectural heritage um, uh, have inside and that so well match the uh, sustainable development goals. And of course, we also support capacity building on the same heritage. Said this, <laughs> uh, we can just be glad to know that uh, Fatih's uh, new Gurna is again the focus of uh, actions aiming uh, at the recognition of the importance um, of the, not just of the site. I had the chance to visit the site many years ago. 
I'm a bit sorry to see the pictures that I've seen today with how much uh, degradation has uh, come since I first visited the site. But uh, I'm also glad that, this, um, that, that there is actions that have been um, uh, carried on and initiated to save the values, all values, tangible and intangible, that this site is carrying. Of course, we encourage the conservation of all uh, Fatih's work uh, in general. Uh, me, myself as a student, I, I, was, uh, uh, I was studying, as somebody said before, uh, in my university in Florence, in Italy, uh, his work. And I think that any architect, not just of my age, has been uh, inspired by his work. What I also want to um, add is that um, Gurna is one of the villages that, like all villages, are representing, I said, the backbone of the country. Uh, our small villages, I think everywhere in any, in any place, in any country, are uh, determinant in the identity of, of the country in itself. And there are places also that represent the slowness and the action of thinking and meditating. And, uh, and they, at the same time, assure the, the, the survival of very important, in, in very important um, values like agriculture and the protection of biodiversity. These are all concepts that need to be protected and disseminated in order to make uh, our goals become true. Many very important architects, those that we call now archistars, are convinced that the rehabilitation of these minor villages, these, these smaller villages, will be the future of many developed countries, not just of Egypt, in order to stop the widespread and uncontrolled soil uh, use and to ensure energy efficiency, enhance circular economies, that are now key instruments in responding to climate change and the pandemic crisis that we are living today. So uh, for sure, Ischia is ready to sustain actions like these ones that you are, uh, that you are proposing today, that you are uh, um, communicating today. And hopefully uh, this, which is a dream of many architects, is becoming true. Hassan Fatih needs, Hassan Fatih's legacy needs to be kept alive. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mrs. President. And we hope that our dream is going on the way for its um, new light. The end of the tunnel must be light. We're waiting for this dream to come true. Thank you, Mrs. President. I wish. I now give the thank you. Thank you. I now give the floor to President Vector Miguel. He's the president of the African Union of Architects, and he's one of the big supporters for our initiative. Uh, he's representing the architecture architects around Africa, uh, Mr. President, um, and he was uh, the past president of the Angolian. Uh, Africa, uh, Archi uh, uh, Association for Architects. Uh, and now he is the ambassador for the International Union of Architects in a Rio uh, uh, conference uh, this year, 2021. Ambassador of Africa. Uh, Mr. President, I give you the floor. Okay, thank you, Dr. Mona. Thank, thank you, you, Dr. Hassan, to invite me to, to say some words to these important webinars. In 2019, during a UIA meeting, we went down the Nile River. It was enriching for me, not only because of the splendor of the architecture that is being discovered and verified throughout different places visited, but also by the model of village of Asan Fati, New Gorna, Luxor, reason why I'm testimony here today. 
It's a different village from the great temples visited along the road, but of, of an architectural importance and lightness that rescued and exhibited the values of traditional Egyptian architecture. The needs of, for shelter, the rigor of the climate, and the availability of the materials lead us to develop techniques and construction methods that can favor thermal comfort in the building. The layout of the rooms remind us of the way of life of the population of the village, its identity, its beliefs, its fears, its joys. Memory feels, feels the need to know more about the past of the place. The collective individual memory of the place, its identities, its roots, its culture, its economy. It's necessary to know the past to realize the present. The building closer to the outside and open to the interior, the placements of the windows and small openings strategically located, as well as the use of the domes that dispense with the use of forms will provide an excellent circulation of air and lighting. The village alone represents the, res the rescue of the identi identity values of that region made in a simple and rational way by the architect Hassan Fatih. The African Union of Architects honors the memory of the architect and is proud of all the work he has done to rescue our collective identity represented there. Collective, collective memory helps to maintain awareness of the past. I hope his legacy can last forever. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr. President, for giving the time to be with us and for this very inspiring words. And I wish that uh, we could meet again. Uh, I know we met last year and the year before in Luxor, and I know how much you appreciated this project and it was a big surprise for you to come and see the Gorna. I wish all the Africans can come and see, and I wish that you give us more support uh, and more inspiring um, visions and creative ideas. Thank you, Mr. President, for being with us. Now, last but not least, uh, Professor Jose Luis Cortez from Mexico. He's, one, uh, he's the president of the Mexican Architects uh, and also he's uh, representing uh, UIA in uh, uh, council member for Region 3, representing the South American countries, member of the OCOMOS Mexico, and a member of Pan America Architects Associations. Uh, he's a professor. He worked in uh, a lot of universities around the world, in Europe, America, Africa, India, and Japan. I want to thank him for raising up at 5 a.m. to be with us. Uh, now I give you the floor, and I'm very thankful for accepting my invitation and for your very, very, very compressed time. I know that you're very busy. To being with us. Please, uh, Professor Jose, can you take the floor? Now, it, now it's okay. Hello, yes. everybody. It's, uh, first of all, I have to say that it is a great honor to participate in this wonderful seminar on sustainable architecture and tourism as contribution of living heritage. I would like to express my thanks to Dr. Mona Radi and to Professor Fekri Hassan for the invitation and congratulate all the organizers and participants 
all the professionals that have been involved in this important event. I communicate that since many years ago, when I was a student, Hassan Fati has been my hero. I, when I was a student, I loved to read all his books. And I think it's a, an example of what a good architect can do to help the, their own community. And I could say that he was not a theoretician, he was a practitioner of his own philosophy of life. He, he was doing everything to build a better uh, habitat for the poor people in Egypt and especially in this village. His thoughts were at universal level. He knew that the housing problem was everywhere, mainly in underdeveloped countries. And the process of urbanization nowadays and the increase of demographic growth reflect that the housing demand has increased tremendously everywhere, mainly in Africa, Asia and Latin America. This, that is why we have to preserve what has been done, what we have. Today, I have to talk about implications of current perspectives on renovation housing projects for the revitalization of New Gota as a cultural tourist destination. According with my experience, I have been working in many historical centers in order to renovate them and to put them in, uh, in the hands of the population in order to bring more tourists. And I have five important considerations. The first one is that the new Guta has a built up heritage with many nice houses that can be revitalized according with Hassan Fatih's conceptualization and can be a cultural tourist destination. The second point, it is very important that Particip the participation of the people of the town in this process of revitalization in order to reinforce the common aspiration. If the people that lives there participates and is with all his willing and uh, commit everybody to revitalize the town, it's possible. Third point, the training of different skills to the whole population is very relevant, not just in construction. It is necessary to have local people that can host foreigners and treat them there properly in order to get revenue from the tourists. There are many other skills that the people can learn. To have a small guest houses, restaurants with local gastronomy, and a small museum with the history of the village is an issue. Fourth point, support from the public and private sector, it is necessary in order to improve the quality of the public space with good infrastructure and services under the frame of a master plan. If the local authorities and the national authorities don't participate, will be a hard task. The last consideration, the fifth one, to acquire the advice of professionals and different organizations of architects, engineers, and cultural institutions at national and international level to promote Hassan Fatih's philosophy. So if we accomplish all these five points, five considerations, I think the future of this village can be really successful. Thank you very much, and my best wishes to accomplish all this. Thank you very much, Dr. Mona. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Jose. Uh, I'm very glad that you are with us. Due to the common uh, history, common culture, 
common uh, knowledge, common architecture between South America and Africa. That's why I was so glad that to hear your speech. Uh, thank you, uh, all my guests, international guests, which I invited them. And I was glad they accepted my, um, my invitation. Um, and now I give the floor to Dr. Uh, Professor Fikri Hassan to start his second session. And thank you. We will be back at the end of this uh, webinar for opening discussion and opening remarks uh, and complete remarks. Thank you. Thank you. Professor, is yours. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mona Radi. This has been an excellent, and outstanding uh, session. Uh, we could see the, uh, the welcome to the idea of reviving and maintaining the legacy of Hassan Fathi. And I wish to thank uh, all our superstars who I'm sure uh, will uh, provide us uh, just with a tremendous uh, spirit to, uh, to go on uh, toward the goal that we, we all aspire to. And I'm really uh, deeply thankful to all of you for coming up today to share with us your uh, wonderful words of encouragement and support. And we count on that in the future. Thank you very much. Uh, now Thank I you, Professor. Thank you. I would like to turn the uh, the the chair to uh, uh, Professor Dalila Al Kirdani, uh, a great friend of mine and one of the wonder women of Egypt. Uh, she is uh, uh, in a very important position uh, as a commissioner of the Committee of Architecture and Visual Arts uh, of the mm -hmm. Council of Culture in Egypt. Uh, she has been very supportive of all, all these efforts that we have been doing. And uh, she will be uh, moderating. She's a professor also at Cairo University. And we have collaborated on, on some uh, uh, projects. And I'm really delighted that. <laughs> Can uh, the non speaker please mute your. Uh, well, mm -hmm. actually, one of my classmates also had the same experience because she's been there for 20 months. Can, can many nice. your... Thank you. Can you, can we please put the... Uh, please, everyone. Done. I muted all. Please mute. You can unmute yourself. Yeah, the host can mute all, and then whoever wants to speak can unmute him, him the or floor, himself. The floor is yours now, <laughs> Dr. Uh, uh, OK, OK. Uh, thank you very much, uh, my very dear friend, all the time friend, in fact, Dr. Fikri Hassan. Uh, he's always uh, with great ideas, with great projects. Uh, he's a dreamer, uh, but also uh, achiever. Uh, there is nothing that he did that he didn't achieve uh, very well. Uh, to, he assigned me to do uh, the uh, chairing of the session on sustainable architecture, community participation, and uh, tourism, uh, where we are inviting uh, uh, colleagues from uh, Egypt uh, to talk about their uh, experiences uh, with this regard and give insight uh, of how uh, this can be done also uh, in Gorna, uh, new Gorna, Hassan Fethi's Gorna, hopefully. Our first speaker is Dr. Yasmin Sabri Hegezi. Uh, she's uh, the head of the architecture department at the Azi University, uh, uh, also a very uh, wonderful colleague uh, whom we work together in so many uh, capacities. Uh, I welcome Dr. Yasmin. She's going to talk to us uh, uh, on working towards Hassan Fathi creative tourism activities and products. Uh, please, Dr. Yasmin. Thank you, Dr. Dalila. Hello, everyone. It's been an honor to be invited to such an event. Uh, I would like uh, briefly, uh, for, for the short time, limited uh, issues, 
to introduce the concept I have uh, think about, about how to make a creative tourism uh, into the environment of Hassan Fathi world. As we all know, this is not just architecture, it's beyond architecture. He created a lifestyle and what we have to, uh, to think about how to market his lifestyle if you even uh, join the, uh, the site, you will see it's a welfare or it's a very good quality of life, even when uh, they don't have that amount of, uh, or the level of economical um, welfare. Uh, as we all know, we have defined as a creative tourism for uh, Hassan Fathi uh, uh, Korna. We have four levels has to be identified and to be uh, to the point, uh, one of the core level, which is the intangible heritage lies uh, behind uh, this uh, project. It's not that a matter of how to, to sustain the craft itself, how to sustain the, uh, the profession of uh, building uh, such, uh, such a uh, complex, uh, but also with the stories of the, of the community themselves, which already they have built their uh, families uh, within this uh, level. Uh, the other level uh, is the facilitating level, which is uh, how to preserve the physical form, which is mostly, um, as as all know, it needs a severe effort to be restored uh, in a state that can receive the planned uh, amount of tourism to be uh, performed and to have a, a daily life uh, inside all the tourism uh, districts. Uh, for, for the supporting level, we always uh, see how the experience which the visitor need to, uh, to see it and to leave it uh, inside Hassan Fathi, how, how can we uh, even as uh, yeah, professors or associate professors of architecture with our students, how we can describe uh, our students uh, the, those building while already we can let them build uh, with themselves how to make uh, a similar uh, project if you can already understand the philosophy which lies behind this project. For, for the creative tourism as is already uh, has a big side of innovation, the augmentation level, of how, how can we see this all videos we saw with Dr. Fekri? We can just augment it to, uh, to all our visitor and student how they can uh, have a tour guided by Hassan Fathi himself. Many, many ideas can be introduced how we can uh, make a product already, uh, make it a brand for Hassan Fathi work as we can see this very little cartoon or what Google already made it. He has a story and this story has to be told. So what we can focus, and this is of course the conceptual and any comment will be welcoming, how we can restore his legacy uh, within a brand uh, as a World Heritage Site and think this is, will be the next mission of all the prestigious uh, experts already join us. Thanks, Dr. Dalila, and I hope that I didn't exceed the time. Excellent, Yasmin. Thank you very much for your insights. Uh, I, uh, unfortunately, for some unknown reason, uh, Dr. Heba Safi Jean couldn't uh, uh, join us, uh, but I'm sure that there must be uh, uh, something that uh, kept her, maybe the internet or something else. Uh, so maybe Dr. Fekri, uh, I, I think you have a few slides to show uh, the effort yes. of, uh, yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Professor uh, Dalila. Uh, the uh, house in which uh, the, 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 what has become known as the House of Judicial Architecture uh, is in a building uh, from the Ottoman period where uh, Hassan Fathi lived. Uh, and it's uh, quite a, a place. Uh, if you are in Cairo, you really have to see it because it overlooks the, uh, the Mameluk minarets and domes, which inspired him, I think, immensely uh, in thinking of uh, the uh, village landscapes. Uh, the, uh, the center has been established uh, for some time now. Uh, at the initiative of uh, Dr. Safi Dean, uh, who uh, is uh, a fan of Hassan Fathi. The, uh, the house 
of Egyptian architecture aims to spread architectural culture, raises raise awareness of uh, architecture, urbanism, and associated arts and crafts. And it communicates with a number of specialized establishments and participates with them in many activities and events, in addition to writing services to students. And we are hoping that we will establish a close relationship with the House of Egyptian Architecture as we move ahead uh, with establishing a center for sustainable architecture in uh, Gurna and try to fulfill many of the recommendations, uh, the valuable recommendations that have been made today. Yeah, I'm sure uh, that uh, Dr. Heba would be very happy to cooperate. Uh, uh, she is a very, very uh, uh, active person uh, in, uh, in the architecture realm in Egypt, and she has lots of uh, very interesting uh, 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 activities uh, connected with the house. Uh, the house is also funded by uh, the uh, uh, the Ministry of Culture, uh, and the, the Heba is very creative in working also with the children, uh, ch uh, children in architecture. So she has a floor to also uh, propagate for uh, and to work for sustainable uh, of uh, the future architects, hopefully. Uh, now we have uh, our, my dear friend, uh, Naisa Mustafa, who's a tour guide and heritage uh, management uh, specialist and also political activist. And mm -hmm. uh, she has uh, lots of uh, activities uh, uh, that she uh, work in also uh, historic Cairo. Uh, uh, Naisa will share with us uh, prospects of architecture, tourism uh, in Luxor. Uh, Maisa, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, the, Dr. Dalila, for the nice presentation, and I'm very honored to be a part of this uh, amazing uh, webinar. So uh, I have, uh, there is the slide uh, that I sent already, it's not on the screen yet, of what I will talk about. I did a risk that I'm sorry. I apologize, I don't have the slide, my son. I can share uh, share it. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from my computer. I think you should stop sharing, Dr. Fikri, so, so that Maisa can uh, okay. share. Okay. Okay, so I can share now what I want. One participant can share at time, yes. It's not, not yet. <laughs> Um, I can't do now. So maybe I entertain you until uh, Naisa could uh, share. Uh, it's not, uh, 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 yes, it's, it's from okay. the maybe icon share it. screen, but uh, it's written one participant can only share at a time. So, uh, but I've so stopped. Uh, so maybe you can just oh, tell us about it, uh, Maisa. Maybe you can just tell yeah. us. Yes. Yeah, Thank but you. I'm not allowed. I'm not. I don't know why. You are not a uh, co-host. Really... You are a co-host. You should be yeah. allowed. Mm -hmm. Who's the host? Can. Uh, Micah, I am, can I am you? Looking for, I am looking for the problem, but um, okay. it doesn't give me the option to make Misa co-host. Mm -hmm. I can only make her host. Misa, if you can give me the host back after that. I'll okay. That. Okay. So you, Actually, you, 
actually, uh, Maika, you can just uh, allow her to share the screen. If you go to her name, and but then I, just I, I allow she do that, but it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't give me that with with everyone. It gives that option except with her. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> discrimination here. Yeah. I have no idea why I am going to make you host for this event, and then hope yeah. uh, the power. I sent I sent it to you, Doctor Fekri, uh, yesterday night. Maybe you can uh, see it on your email. The slide that uh, I sent it yesterday. It was in PDF and. Uh, one slide okay, PowerPoint. Check it. You should be able, you are host now, you should be able to share. Okay. Okay. Uh, just I click on share screen. There is three sentence appear, multiple yeah. participant, one participant, advanced sharing option. So multiple participant, and you can share not on the arrow, the share screen itself. Okay. It's a uh, written basic advanced, so I don't see my desktop or uh, Safari, maybe. No. It doesn't work. On the 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 on the arrow, the green arrow. I don't have, I have it my, to my computer. Oh. I don't have it in my email. I, I, I did not receive it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Yesterday night. It's okay. not there. Okay. What time did you send? Oh, I, I can I, I I can begin my uh, my talk. Can you? Yes, share please with, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Can you share it with me? I will. Okay. I'll try to share uh, to share a screen. Can you send it to me, Tai? Okay, but I can uh, to not lose time. Uh, just a minute, yeah. I sent it Hadir. If you could, it would be uh, great. So I can I can um, start now, Dr. Dalila. Yes, yes, please. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so I will begin my talk with a sentence, many words that were said to me during my job as a tour guide since I began in 1987. Uh, temples, tombs, old mosques, churches are amazing. Ancient Egyptians were awesome, but we wish to see other things more than stones. What about the present Egyptian people? What about their daily life? what they eat, what they do. Do they keep their artistic, the artistic talents of their ancestors? Where do they, they live? So can we stop by a village near the historic sites? But unfortunately, my repeated answer was, sorry, we don't have time. Sorry, we are not allowed. Sorry, it's not available for the time being. Uh, tourists was, were used to come in a big buses in a very, yes, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. So uh, I put this photo with the buses to show you how most of tourists came to Egypt isolated from the environment of Egypt, uh, only behind the glasses of buses or cruises or hotels. So before uh, to talk about the tourism, I think the tour operators, they don't know their tourism. So knowing, do we really know our visitors? Because the visitors or their tourists were classified traditionally according to their age, their sex, and their nationalities. But recently, they have become classified according to other more things, previous experiences, activities preferences, their social group their companion, and most importantly, their motivation. In the uh, science of the tourism and travel industry, now tourists are divided into four key drivers, socially, emotionally, intellectually, and spiritually. It means that they have different motivation to travel. 
in UK in 2001, Morris had graves. He made uh, a pyramid like Maslow, hierarchy of needs for the tourist motivation. The basic was 48% of tourists wanted to travel for social reasons, social. That's very important, the interaction. 39% for intellectual, cultural reasons. 11% for emotional and 3% for spiritual. So the sustainable tourism or the new tourism, the alternative tourism, it could rely on three main factors. What we call the visitor experience. Secondly, the community involvement. And thirdly, how to sustain the site. Even all this mass of tourism, but we have how to conserve it. The visitor experience in the academia is a multidisciplinary. It's the combination of many disciplines, such as education, marketing, hospitality, psychology, and sociology. But on the ground, on the real life, how to obtain a successful visitor experience. Of course, the use of creative method of interpretation in the historic sites. But the most important is the personal context. The human context is crucial between the visitors and the personnel in the sites with the local community, how to participate and interact. Spiritually, how to go back home with genuine products, not only uh, products that uh, Chinese or not real products. And not last but not least, the, the entertainment also. It's very important to have this experience that provide visitors with very good memories about the site. The second pillar of the good, the sustainable tourism is the community engagement. Of course, all all people all the, in all the world who are talking about a community. The UNESCO community is the fifth C adopted by the World Heritage Committee in the, that third, uh, 31st session in Christ Church at New Zealand after credibility, conservation, capacity building, and communication, community came. Even the UNWTO, the United Nations, World Tourism Organization had planned a code of ethics of tourism in her article because they see that the, there is a lot of negative uh, impacts on tourism. The most important one, it was number three in Article 5, which say that special attention should be paid to the fragile sites in countries such as rural and mountain regions. I think that if we are talking about the three pillars, the visitor experience, the community involvement and sustain, I think the new governor could be a pilot of Dr. Hassan Tati, could be a pilot project because there's, the village inhabitants are an estimated of 1,100 residents in 70 houses. Many inhabitants have close association with tourism. Younger men tended to seek employment in tourist section. Women also, some of them, maintain small, small scale of home-based industries such as sewing and agriculture and animal products. So I can give you some example. How it could be done in Hassan Fathi village to be a real pilot project of sustainable tourism. Capacity building, of course, of young, for young people. Support women to make genuine products in food handicrafts support the creation of small guest houses in their vernacular homes. But the most important is to design a good marketing plan addressing to the decision makers in tourism to contact the tour operators, the tour guides, and on the internet, the Facebook creators. Finally, encourage a very special type of tourism, which is the VTPs, the volunteer tourism mainly for the young people with the objective of the promotion of the cross culture between different country and that would help for to create a sustainable tourism in Hassan Fatih. Thank you and I wish I didn't a lot exceed in time. Thank you very much. No, ex excellent uh, Maisa. 
uh, thank you for your insights uh, as always uh, shining <laughs> Uh, now, uh, I would like to invite uh, Professor to Dr. Maisa, can you please give me back the hosting ability? Yes, Maisa, can you give the host back to, uh, please, Michael. to the real host, Michael. to Maika, please? Okay, so now I would like to invite Dr. Hassan Refat. Um, he's professor at the Faculty of Tourism uh, in Luxor. Uh, Dr. Hassan, please go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, the, the Professor uh, Dalida. Uh, actually, I'm a lecturer at Faculty of Tourism and the Hotel Management, Luxor University, not a professor. Uh, can I just share my uh, my presentation? Okay. Sharing so Dr. Uh, Hassan can. Could, is, yeah, is now he right is. Now? Yes, it is visible. Yes. Okay. Uh, um, um, first of all, thank you uh, very much, uh, Dr. Fikri Hassan, for the invitation. Professor Fikri, it is a great honor to participate in such a great um, event. Uh, my very brief presentation, which is only two slides as requested by Professor Fekri uh, is about thematic tourism as a tool for a new interpretation of Luxor cultural heritage. As uh, in this presentation, I'd like to point out to which extent thematic tourism can be um, a very effective tool for a new uh, interpretation of Luxor cultural heritage, as well as um, the revival of cultural tourism in Egypt uh, that has been badly affected even before the coronavirus. Uh, we all know that uh, when it comes to Egypt, the mental image that already has been taken about Egypt is that it is a destination for cultural heritage tourism or for cultural tourism. Uh, but actually, when it comes to reality, as it is shown in this figure, 96% of our inbound tourism is leisure tourism. It's not a cultural uh, tourism. And only about 2% of our inbound tourism is cultural tourism. This means that we have, uh, you know, we have lost our competitive advantage. And we started to sell the product which is being sold by different countries, the sun and sea. Uh, the idea here, uh, I'd like, you know, uh, uh, to know exactly, uh, as I have mentioned, to which extent uh, uh, thematic tourism can be a very good tool to revive the cultural heritage tourism to Egypt again. And you know that thematic tourism is such a kind of tourism product which row up natural or man-made attraction that focus on a chosen topic or a theme. And um, according to the researchers, it can play very effective role when it comes to the diversification of cultural tourism product and providing the customer with different interesting experience. Do we need this? Yes, we need it badly, uh, specifically in, in, um, in uh, Luxor, because actually uh, you may know that one of the major problems that face our uh, cultural heritage in Luxor or in Egypt in general is the traditional and stereotype interpretation or presentation of uh, uh, it's uh, heritage site. I mean, I, I talk here about Luxor. The matter that created a negative impact on cultural tourism in terms of number of inbound tourists, as I have mentioned before, as well as number of repeat visitors. As such a traditional way of interpretation of cultural heritage provide the customers, I mean the tourists here, with a very limited scope of experience despite the cultural richness of the topics that can be presented through uh, Luxor uh, uh, heritage, uh, cultural heritage. As, uh, here, as um, I can just present some, uh, sorry, some of the um, tourism based itineraries that can be developed in Luxor, depending on the same raw material, the same temples, the same museums, the same tombs, but it reflects, uh, you know, uh, um, some uh, another dimension for our cultural heritage. Here, for example, uh, we have developed uh, what's so-called on the footsteps of the queens of Egypt, uh, and also the second itinerary, food in ancient Egypt. The third one, crafters and craftsmanship in ancient Egypt. 
And we can here also merge between ancient, you know, um, um, uh, cultural heritage and the contemporary cultural heritage. We can develop what's so-called know what's behind it, what's behind the final product. If you are interested in alabaster, for example, you're going to be provided with uh, with an itinerary that enable you to see all the process of manufacturing that you know this this product from the raw material till the final product. Uh, we have also here uh, what's so called festival and events in ancient Egypt, music and musicians in ancient Egypt, animals and wildlife in ancient Egypt. These are all the uh, you know uh, thematic based itinerary that can be developed from a Luxor culture heritage and can diversify our exhibited product and also target a new customer, uh, uh, a new cultural oriented customer. Thank you very much because I was, uh, you know, told by Dr. Fikri only just five minutes. Thank you, Dr. Hassan. A very insightful uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, now we have uh, a very interesting experience uh, from Athar Lina, uh, 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 led by Dr. Mayel Ibrashi. Uh, it's a unique experiment, really, in historic uh, Cairo. Um, uh, the uh, architect Hadir uh, will be presenting her uh, 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 the uh, presentation of Athar Dina, which is called uh, Heritage Conservation as a Vehicle of Development. Um, and we really did uh, groundbreaking uh, results in historic Cairo. Hadir, please go ahead. Okay. Hello, hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Hadir Dahab and uh, I will talk today about uh, our initiative, Arthur Lena. Um, I will just share the screen. No, you are sharing the screen, okay. Okay, so now you can see my screen now, right? Yes. Okay, so uh, simply, um, Athalana is um, a, a participatory conservation initiative that aims to establish uh, modalities of uh, citizen participation in heritage conservation based on understanding the monument as a resource. But the idea is uh, seeing the monument as a resource and making the community, the local community, see it also as a resource to use the heritage conservation as a vehicle for development. We are working on uh, Historic Cairo. Uh, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site listed in 1979. Uh, um, we are working on three areas, Al Khalifa, Al Hattaba, and Al Imam Al Shafi. Uh, we started in 2012 with a participatory research and design project. Uh, with the community asking them what they need and what they want and how we can um, um, how we can yeah, uh, to, uh, to investigate the problem and uh, the relation to um, the relation to the monuments in the area so based on this uh, participatory research and design project we had uh, three action uh, lines the first one was heritage education and uh, for children and women in order to foster the sense of ownership of heritage at young age. Uh, the second one is conserving heritage sites and adapting them for use, uh, for use for the benefit of the community. And third one was grounding heritage in uh, socioeconomic of its urban context. To not take too long, I will show you a short video about what we are doing and I hope that could inspire you, I would inspire all of us to do uh, how to apply uh, um, these methods in uh, Hassan Fathi uh, village.
So as I said, we worked and we believe in heritage as a, dri a driver for development. And we were thinking about uh, our, our core values are link, uh, integrate, participate, and create. Uh, seeing um, local community and the heritage as um, uh, a benefit, making the heritage benefit, benefit, beneficial for the local community. And that's all, Dr. Dalila. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Hadir. Uh, thank you very much for excellent presentation and excellent insight on Nogaura. Uh, I really hope that we see this also in uh, New Gorna soon. I hope so. so last but not least, uh, Karim Ibrahim, architect Karim Ibrahim, who is uh, one of the pioneering uh, conservation architects uh, in Egypt, really. Uh, he got uh, an award, uh, honorary award from the Supreme Council of Culture last year uh, for some community work that uh, he did. Uh, he also was uh, an active member of uh, the Aga Khan uh, work in um, Darb al Ahmar. Now Karim works in Isna and he will give us uh, some insights from his experience. Karim, please come in. Hello, Dr. Dalila. Hi, everyone. Can I share the screen, please? Uh, Dr. Fikri, yeah, he, uh, he will allow you now, yes? Yes, we don't have much time, so please be quick. Yeah, I'll be quick. So. So uh, are you able to see the screen? Yes. Okay, thank you. So um, I'll be very brief. Uh, we work currently uh, in Esna, which is a city located uh, 60 kilometers to the south of Luxor. Um, it's, the context is a bit different from like the Hassan Fathi village. It's more of an urban context of like a city that has been uh, in place since the pharaonic times. So uh, we're talking about a city that dates back to the ancient Egyptian time with layers of history dating back to the Greco-Roman, Islamic, Coptic, and modern areas of history. And um, our approach there is to like change the focus from like a, a tourist model that is focusing only on sightseeing of um, uh, ancient Egyptian monuments uh, to something that's more comprehensive, focusing on historic cities and the like, different narratives that they carry. So basically promoting an idea of like a historic city within the context of Upper Egypt. Um, this is a photo of Isna in the 1920s, and as you can see, this is like a fully fledged historic city that has been there, um, containing the um, famous um, Greco Roman temple of Hnum. In front of it, there is like an almost one uh, thousand like years old mosque, which is the Lamri Mosque, and um, a very rich like um, heritage of, like, of urban fabric that is mostly built of mud bricks. So, this is what we can call like a mud brick city, in fact, and it's all like mostly built from like uh, earth and architecture. We started working there in 2010 and, and basically what drew our attention, we were like um, uh, asked by the Egyptian government to develop a revitalization plan for the neighborhood. But everybody at that point of time was only focusing on the temple. 
what we saw is a multi-layered history that can bring multiple narratives like that are different from like what is being promoted in Upper Egypt as a destination. So we've been focusing on four areas to improve like the visitor experience all over there. First is to restore like a series of buildings. Second is to uh, interpret these buildings and actually on the heritage oral and uh, like the physical history of the city itself. Third is to work on improvements of services and forces to provide information and focus on the richness of like um, the heritage of the city. And the fifth column, which an element as Mesa like rightly said, is to engage the community within this process. So this is one of the buildings. This is an 18th century caravansarai that we've recently restored. This year, we hope to turn it into a visitor center for the city. Uh, we've restored like a local market, um, which is actually not a touristic bazaar, not something that uh, like uh, uh, hosts like tourism activities, Rather, we focused on community facilities that can attract not only like tourists, but also the visitors like to the cities. So focusing on such kind of like public upgrading over there. We've also worked on the restoration and uh, revitalization of some of like the um, um, uh, interesting and significant buildings within the city. And actually we're working right now with some of the residents to turn them, some of them into tourist facilities uh, or like uh, services that could provide services for the visitors as well. And um, in addition, we started an, a program to rebrand the city itself, um, presenting like information, as I mentioned, and interpretation material, such as like a city map, uh, tools, products that are built around like a visual identity for the city that was developed together with the local residents. Finally, we also like focus on community engagement, and this is one of the most important pillars that we're working on. Um, so far, we managed to bring in almost 2,000 students, actually, and kids to our restoration project and heritage sites so they can know more about the heritage of their city. We've engaged with women, especially in the craft development sector. We've trained more than 70 women in different like handicrafts, like industries, to and connected them to uh, um, tourist markets and like handicrafts market. So basically, what we're trying to do there is to build on an existing heritage and actually try to dig its history and come up with a new narrative that can present something that can compete within the um, context of like um, Upper Asia. Thank you so much. Thank you, Karim. Uh, Excellent work. Uh, we are looking forward to visit next time, Isna, inshallah. Uh, great, uh, great presentation, all uh, speakers. I hand, uh, uh, I hand this uh, session now to Dr. Fekri. Please, Dr. Fekri. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Dalila, for uh, this uh, incredible session. I regret, sadly, that we don't have much time for the general discussion. Uh, but uh, I promise that we will have uh, another uh, session uh, if uh, Minja and uh, Maria would allow me, uh, which would be devoted to more voices, especially from the community, which you didn't have much time to uh, engage at this point. And there are many other distinguished uh, uh, participants who, uh, who would have enriched our discussion. Uh, but uh, time is so short, and I don't think we could have missed one word of all the presentation that were, were made. And, uh, and I'm, I'm sure we have been all enriched by these wonderful discussions. So I, I beg you to postpone the general discussion, and I will uh, have the, uh, uh, the chance, I'm sure, to re-engage again with all of you and with a, a broader audience. Uh, and uh, my main... Uh, uh, conclusion here is that I'm extremely heartened by all the contributions and I wish to thank our international guests for the words of wisdom and encouragement and I also am very pleased with all our Egyptian colleagues and I think we have shining examples of how they can carry on uh, uh, you know work at the, the highest standards and, and this is extremely gratifying because uh, uh, a few years ago, we didn't have such uh, uh, cadre of uh, community architects and people who are in the community. So I'm hoping that we will be soon, especially with the Hassan Fatih Center, at the forefront of community architecture and social architecture worldwide. Uh, in, in final conclusion, I really wish to thank everyone, especially our superstars and our Egyptian colleagues uh, who uh, are the promise of uh, the future. And uh, I am also very thankful for the team that has worked with me, Hadir uh, and Inas, uh, Karim Badr, and Dina Abuzaid, 
who made this possible. And at this point, I really do thank all of you uh, and hope to see you again in another occasion and we'll be in touch. Thank you very much, all of you. Thank you, Dr. Thank Fekri, you. thank you so thank much. Thank you, all of you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Enjoyed having you. And I'm sure we'll meet again. Thank you, Dr. Fekri, thank you. Especially thank Dr. Warner has been really